Where, where, just give me uh, the setting. Where was your house situated? Um, it, facing the arm in Riverhead, like okay. where the what we'd call the land wash. Yeah. So, so you, you could, could see the water. You could see the water. So our bay window actually faced the water, as opposed to uh, I. I was found as funny in outports. Uh, the bay window faced the road. That's right. And the small yeah. 70 yeah. slider <laughs> slider windows faced the That's bay. That's right. I yeah. could never figure that one out, but yeah. I guess we just took it for granted. Yeah. The view. It's like I used to I used to marvel <coughs> at houses on Signal Hill. All all the, the windows that faced out on the harbor, they had like little tiny windows. And as you say, the big window was uh, facing like the road. Don't know where that yeah. comes from. <laughs> no, <laughs> I guess, I guess um, they just took the view for granted. That's what I know? mean. Yeah, they were outdoors so much, and you know. <laughs> or if you lived on yeah. that, you you well, you don't want to take your work home with you. Yeah, say. it's like me. I haven't seen an iceberg <laughs> in years because <laughs> I saw so many of them <laughs> yeah. growing up. I mean, yeah, you certainly you, don't seek them out anymore. Yeah, I don't <laughs> seek them out. You know, I mean, I I kind of get a kick out of how excited tourists get about them. You know, but um, well, I guess we I we live, we live in a do. fairly exotic place. Once you yeah. leave it. Mm. And poke yeah. around elsewhere, you realize how how exotic That's this right. place is. Yeah, exactly. So, did you come from uh, an artistic family? Um, well, my father was uh, uh, he taught art mm -hmm. and had a had a pretty big interest in it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he taught art in grade six, and he taught grade six. So he always had. Um, Art books around, mm -hmm. and of course, art books in bookstores are the first things to go on sale. It seems. Of course, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. But anyway, uh, so we had tons. Yeah. And uh, I lived in them, mm -hmm. and began to reproduce the images in them, mm -hmm. and and of course, he had access to materials too. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing you didn't have a color coloring book when you were growing up. I did. Did you? And I always went outside the lines. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, not intentionally. That's, no, <laughs> no paint by numbers, though. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, well that's good to hear. Uh, what was school life like uh, in Riverhead? Um, well, I went to school in Mount Carmel okay. earlier on because right. that's where my father taught. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I went to kindergarten in Riverhead, then from one to eleven in Mount Carmel, and then grade twelve in St. Mary's. But um, I hated school. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Couldn't stand it. It was something yeah. that I felt was just in the way. Yeah, I wasn't crazy about it either. I really didn't like yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, now, in, in, that, in that area, uh, you had three professional artists residing. There was uh, Christopher Pratt, Mary Pratt, yeah. and Scott Gowdy, I believe. Uh, their presence in your general vicinity <coughs> um, is that something that you were you were conscious of? Did you know? Oh, who very they were much so. I think yeah. uh, what that did was it uh, it was proof that you could do something that you loved and make a living mm -hmm. from it. So that was yeah. um, that was a huge thing. Mm. Mm. So uh, what about when uh, you you got to high school? Um, I, I don't know about when you went to school, but uh, I'm assuming that they had a pretty good art program uh, in high school or not? No. No? Okay. No. So well, uh, which high school did you go to? I went to Our Lady of Mount Carmel, which okay. is gone. Yeah. And uh, Dunn Memorial. Okay. Now, yeah. uh, like, uh, I mean, I had some good teachers and some yeah. not so good teachers, yeah. but um, yeah. But art was something I guess this, you, I guess maybe the St. John's schools probably had more resources. Or, definitely. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Because I, I went to school here in St. John's, so yeah, that was probably the difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, art was something you did on your own, mm. and now it seems like art and education, or it, it's uh, they seem to be pulling back even more. Mm. That's too bad. I'm sorry to hear yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everywhere, I mean. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, I mentioned uh, Christopher and Mary Pratt. Uh, am I right in saying that they be kind of became mentors to you, or oh yes. they had a tremendous yeah? And over the year, like um, 
You had a personal friendship with yeah, her. Yeah, uh, Mary uh, would, as a teenager, would let, when, when I was a teenager, <laughs> would uh, yeah. let me make studio visits yeah. on the weekends and um, kind of uh, mostly just discussed the politics in art and uh, what to expect from the career, which mm -hmm. I was hell-bent on pursuing. Pursuing, yeah, naturally. And, um, yeah, she was a great woman. Sad mm. to see her go. Yeah, that's uh, she has, and she was a lovely uh, human being. Very maternal. Uh, not just a wonderful artist, yeah. but uh, a wonderful human being. No um, question. If I were to see something that Grant Boland painted when he was 13 or 14 years of age uh, on canvas or on, on paper, what would I be looking at? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> Very naive, yeah. you know, because you draw on... Uh, you draw on the experiences you have, so there's really not much to look at there. I mean, there's only so much you can pull from, uh, um, I don't know. I guess I tried to live vicariously through, like, John Hughes movies, and I don't know. Yeah. There's not much yeah. you can draw on. So, basically, at that point but in my you, life... I mean, well, wh what, what style did you pursue, or was it an eclectic thing where you did some abstract, you did um, some realism, or... Uh, well, like I said, I focused primarily on, you know, the old masters in those books. Mm -hmm. uh, so very, uh, very European uh, yeah. style of working, and okay. uh, like the older okay. style. Yeah. yeah. So uh, was the decision to go to art school some, quite a natural one for you, or did you have to think a lot about it? No. I mean, at the time, that was what you did, right? You uh, finished high school and you did a second, especially if you knew what you wanted to do, you followed through with the secondary uh, step. And um, so that's what I did. I, I talked to uh, Barbara Pratt once and, and she told me that uh, she went to the Ontario College of Art, I believe, and she, she said, I only spent a month there. She said, I just decided it wasn't for me. I well, that's just it. Yeah. Um, art schools in general, um, provide an academic view mm. to visual arts. Mm -hmm. um, but art academics talk about art, and artists make art. Mm. And um, there's the difference. So I, I, I felt the same way Barbara did. Mm. And how many years did you spend in art Four. School? Oh, so it's quite a stretch. Yeah. yeah so it's a, it's a bachelor's program, right? It is. It's, a, it's, a, it's its own faculty. Yeah. yeah. So what do you start out doing, like in first year? Uh, drawing, uh, art history. You have a minor in art history when you finish, mm -hmm. uh, which is important. Mm. Um, uh, so you do drawing, painting, sculpture, photography, printmaking. Mm -hmm. The technical side is fantastic. Uh, and actually, you know, you do learn in spite of, of it. Mm. <laughs> you, uh, yeah. like the politics of it. Right. Of which there is a lot. And how does how does the Grenfell program rate? Um, is it like do they have great equipment and oh yeah, all that uh, the facilities are are good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just have um, uh, yeah, I don't have any complaints there. Mm -hmm. uh, not with that part. Did you ever get to mingle with and and share ideas with say the students who are doing the uh, the theater program there, the ones that were studying act, acting and oh uh, yeah, yeah, directing and yeah, that sort there of was thing. crossover uh, crossovers all the time, and we were friends and yeah, and then there was crossover projects as well. Yeah, so I guess maybe you would work on sets for yeah their productions uh, that kind of yeah. Thing? Now they have stagecraft as well, but like yeah. we do uh, just as projects, posters and things like that for their productions. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Um, now, you have been kind of vocal about uh, the lack of any instruction or training in art school regarding the business of art. Um, you know, the idea that, you know, eventually you're going to go out and you're going to have to try to make a living making art. And, and how, how does that happen? How much do you charge for painting? Well, how, that, how does it that, work? that conversation never came up in art school because the mention of money seemed like a dirty topic. Yeah. And uh, but so did they not think that you had to go <laughs> go out and eventually make a living uh, 
doing this if you were I mean every every occupation is tied to money in one way or another I don't understand of course, why yeah. of course yeah. I don't I mean I mean uh, look at it like this um, if if uh, if 98% of every other graduate, like every, uh, mm. so say engineering, uh, business, medicine, if 98% of, of every one of those graduating classes stopped working after three years, um, well, mm. there'd be inquiries like, the, yeah. like what, what, what's going on here? Yeah. But those are the stats for, for graduating arts. Um, uh, or for graduates, yeah, in fine arts, most you, people stop working. Yeah, so uh, unless you. Uh, I mean, it's great for um, it produces art teachers mm. or academics. Mm. So if if you had to design <coughs> a course uh, that they could implement, say at Grenfell, in you know how to how to how to make money selling your art, how to have a successful art career. Uh, and put bread on the table, you know. What what would be included in that course? Well, I'm still working on it, so <laughs> I, I'm trying to sort through it myself. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's people out there that that uh, could formulate something. Mm -hmm. But right now, it doesn't exist. It seems to me. I mean, I didn't come across it. No, I haven't heard of it because mm -hmm. this is a global concern, like an issue. Of course, it is. Yeah, yeah it's not just here or. Yeah. Uh, this idea of the struggling artist is it's not a myth it's, <laughs> it's no but those uh, uh, but the ones that do survive uh, have some sense of business mm -hmm. you can't survive that's a very good point if yeah. you don't and you you're developing that because I know you were a part of the the gallery system for a lot of years and uh, if people aren't aware of this the, the way that works is that uh, the gallery takes a percentage and you take a percentage. I don't know if it's 50-50 or whatever, but uh, it's probably 50-50 these days. Uh, but you decided to get away from that, and now you have <coughs> basically what is, I guess, an online business or a, a business where, where, where you develop your customers through uh, email or... Mailing lists. Mailing lists you cultivate a mailing list, uh, yeah. which is what galleries do. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there are benefits to to gallery representation because they they do the selling for you um, right. they have wall space mm -hmm. um, but I uh, I think I uh, like uh, I started in art school I started selling through galleries while I was in art school uh, uh, some professors had issue uh, took issue with that mm -hmm. because I was selling in the same commercial gallery as they were in Water work, but mm -hmm. you know, we'll get into that. But um, I think so. Uh, I was in that system for over twenty years, for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just personally, I think I uh, I just felt a bit stifled by it, perhaps. And um, I just needed a break from it. The the percentages, like uh, when I started out, it was 33 and a third. Um, th that's what the galleries take was. Mm. Then it went to 40. Then it went to 50. Mm. And I hear some galleries in bigger centers go 60. And now I pulled the shoe around 50 anyway. Yeah. It's just business. It, uh, it doesn't make any sense. No. And, uh, and uh, let's face it, people buy, uh, people shop on their phones now. So Absolutely. the the bricks and mortar part isn't vital mm -hmm. to making a sale, mm -hmm. and if people are familiar with your work and how it looks, and they're you know, uh, they're it, um, they're they're fine with a JPEG. Yeah, that's right. And especially if you're familiar with the artist. That's work, what I mean. Yeah. Because I purchased uh, one of your paintings through your email that's right. list, and I mean I I saw it and I loved the image. And from knowing your work, and I mean, you give the size of the piece and whatnot, I knew what it was going to look like uh, on the wall. I mean, I, I just, you know, it was an image I liked. So I had no issue with right. pur purchasing it that way at all. I didn't need to see it on a yeah, gallery. Yeah, most people don't. 
Yeah. Uh, very few people say, can I come see it first? Right. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Grant, uh, just getting back to your art, uh, I remember your first show, and um, a lot of your work when you began uh, had a lot of religious imagery, uh, religious uh, icons and that, that sort of thing. Um, wh what were you trying to express at that point, uh, and why did you decide to move away from that? Uh, well, but you can be honest. Oh, I, mean. I will be. Yeah, you will. <laughs> I I grew up in the Irish Catholic mm -hmm. part of the world, yeah. thick with it, yeah. and um, went to Irish Catholic schools, mm. and um, you know it's the nature of artists to question everything, mm -hmm. and I had a lot of questions. Um, but logic and rational thought straightened most of that out for me. Mm. Uh, but I do like the magic in religious imagery. Mm. Now here's a, I hope you don't find this to be too crass, but uh, how much of what, what you're painting these days um, is, is what you figure will sell? Oh, nothing. I don't, uh, well, you know that crosses your mind, but if you uh, if you if you put uh, your pa or your what you love to do, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, backseat to your dr your draw mm -hmm. to money, I think it'll show your uh, it won't be sincere, and it'll be obvious, mm -hmm. and um, so that uh, you can't. You, you can't chase money because it won't work. It, uh, as far as I know, it never works if you do that mm -hmm. in anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for a long, anyway. Yeah. Um, is that what you mean? Like, yeah, um, yeah, no, absolutely. I, but the, I, the thing is, my... Uh, it's, I, I ask that because some, uh, an artist told me one time, and I'm not saying this artist did it, but, <laughs> but if we're talking about, uh, you know, artists or um, tourists who go into galleries and, you know, shop around for a little memento to bring home or what a painting or whatever. And they, they said to me, uh, if you put a whale on anything, they'll buy it. <laughs> well, on that, on that level of market, yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you're... And, but the thing is, like, uh, um, my... The way I work, the way mm. I work is it's representational painting. So mm. it, um, what I paint is recognizable. So if you look at painting as a language, which it is, it's a way to communicate. Mm. Most people can understand what I'm trying to say, mm. uh, at least on the surface, because it's recognizable. Mm. So some, there's some appeal to most. But mm. if if it was non-representational or abstract or um, uh, your market is limited, but now that's not intentional for me. Like I didn't choose realism because I want to sell more. Mm. I've I've tried, uh, like I dip my foot in all kinds of mm. ways to paint, but uh, I just keep coming back to this. It's just a natural, it's a yeah. natural um, way to express. Yeah. Um, there. Are, uh, a year or so ago, you had a, a an unexpected and uh, extraordinary event uh, happen in in your life, uh, especially for somebody your age. You had a stroke. Yeah. Um, and did you have any warning uh, leading up to that that something was wasn't right? No. Um, I'm trying to get the timeline straight now, but uh, months prior, I started to get these dizzy spells mild at first, probably once a week. Uh, now, they don't know if this is related directly to the stroke. Uh, well, it, it, anyway, so I had these dizzy spells. They got, uh, they got more frequent and more violent. And now my wife was down in the studio with me last going off. And um, I felt like you could feel it come on, these dizzy spells. So I was working on a painting. and. Uh, I said, I, I got, got it coming on again. I'm going to have to stop and lie down. So I went upstairs and laid down. 
and this was really violent. The, the, it, it felt like uh, somebody picked you up by the ankle and just swung you around the room like a, like a cat. And um, I don't know why you'd swing a cat, but... <laughs> um, so it, it made me urge, like, uh, from the motion sickness. You were nauseated. And violently, too. Mm -hmm. And um, they figure, oh, so anyway, that happened. Uh, I, um, not to be too graphic, nothing, I didn't throw up or anything, but I wanted to. So I asked my son to grab me a bucket, just in case. This is not a great topic of conversation, but whatever, it's, no, that's what it is. And um, so I started to retch. And uh, then, no, actually, when he brought the bucket in, or my wife did, I can't remember, I reached for it, and my arm shot out that way. I was like, something's happening here. Something different is happening. And then my lips went numb and I couldn't swallow. I tried to get up, couldn't walk. So I said to my wife, I'm having a stroke. You're gonna have to call, or she said, I'm calling an ambulance. I said, yeah, I'm not gonna argue with you there. Cause most times like I put off going to hospitals and, but you know, the signs were clear to me. I'm having a stroke. And um, I figured I was gonna die actually. Was that scary? Well, it was not pleasant. <laughs> It wasn't a, a, like an enjoyable feeling. And my son was in the other room. I told him to stay away just in case, because I mean, that'd be a horrible image to be, yeah. uh, anyway. Um, so the ambulance did show up, took me to the hospital. And um, I, I, I thought I was gonna die because uh, my, I couldn't swallow, like my throat was numb as well. Uh, they took me to the hospital and uh, I started to feel better. So I, uh, and they, they didn't say that I had a stroke. They suggested a mini stroke, but, and um, I, uh, uh, I was there for a couple hours and I said, uh, I have a painting that I have to finish. Can I go and come back? And they said, well, if you go, you have to get readmitted. Like you're in now, yeah. like we can't observe you if you go home. And I said, I'm best kind. Like, oh, I'll be fine. I just want to finish this painting. And they said, well, we don't advise it. We don't advise that you do that. So anyway, I got up, and it was, I had no control over my legs or, or anything. And I, I laughed. I found it absurd that you can't control your own body. Mm. And um, anyway, they kept me in after that, like, because there, no, uh, there was no way. And in, you know, in hindsight, I don't even know how I could hold a brush to, to do it. Right. And um, uh, yeah, so then they did some scans and they, it, they showed uh, you know, the black spot that sh showed right. that it was a stroke. So you weren't left with any deficits, yeah. were you? You were? Yeah, I did. Um, uh, I went up doing some physio at, at the Miller Center and that crowd are great, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like I said, um, can't say enough about them. Well, what, what was the physio for? What could you not do? Or well, they found deficit that I didn't even know was there because uh, they, they run you through. Like I did occupational therapy and physiotherapy. Right. So right. they found things that I wasn't aware of. And, um, but, it, but the obvious things were I, I would trip going upstairs. I'd be fine downstairs because I guess my left foot was numb. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, you couldn't lift, you, you thought you were lifting your foot and you weren't, so you trip a lot. Mm. I dropped a lot of things yeah. with my left hand. I still have numbness here and in my left foot. Um, but n nothing too severe. I mean, it could have been a hell of a lot worse. But it wasn't, um, so the stroke wasn't a lifestyle thing. I want to make that clear. <laughs> it wasn't because of something you did or? No, my cholesterol levels were, yeah. you know, the high and the normal. I. Uh, quit cigarettes a mm. couple of years before that or three years before yeah. that. Um, so, yeah, it was just a fluke. It was a weird thing that happened. But in the meantime, are you on some kind of medication to prevent it from happening again or? No, because my, oh, uh, yeah, so what they found, I don't know if I already said this, but when I retched, mm -hmm. um, what they figure happened was that uh, my neck, my head went back or was tossed in some way and it severed oh. an artery. Oh. 
Wow. Um, in my that almost sounds like a freak. It's just a freak thing. thing. Yeah, they don't know what caused the dizzy spells, but the mm -hmm. dizzy spells stopped after the stroke. So you're in great shape now. Yeah, in better shape now. Better shape. Yeah. Um, watching what I eat. Good. Really, you know, I yeah. still live. Yeah. But you know, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not going to bore myself today. Well, as long as you can keep painting and <laughs> yeah. keep enjoying life, that's the important thing. Grant, thanks so much for being on the program. Uh, uh, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure it's talking to you. Convenience Marie's Money Mart is here for you. A one stop shop for a variety of products, homestyle breads, sandwiches, plus check out our freshly baked artisan breads and single serve desserts exclusively at our in store bakery on Frecker Drive. With 25 locations wherever you go, there we are. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. What do you love so much? You're really beautiful. trust you. I don't want you. You're pathetic. <gasps> but we're so right for each other. I know. What do we love? Our son is one. My father was one. I am one. Are, Are you, you one? one? Hello, this is Gary Weaselton of NL Now on Rogers TV, and you can catch me and the gang Sunday nights at 6.30 for stuff like this. I wish you were home to stay In the children's garden A journey to the other side And now now, right here, only on Rogers TV. The following program is brought to you by Rogers and...